June 2nd, 2023. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the Ninja Trader 8 platform, 2000 tick chart. Go down to the descriptions below and you can see where I thought I saw setups as well as where I took my trades. So I took a total of three trades today and I actually lost on all three. The first trade, I thought it was a it was the correct setup, but in hindsight, I think it's probably, I didn't look at it or review the chart correctly in real time. The second trade was actually a correct reading of my trade of the setup, but I actually took the incorrect trade by hitting the buy instead of a sell. So I wanted to go short, but I ended up going long. It's this trade over here. And then this trade marked with an X that was kind of an emotional trade. I kind of like, um, got super frustrated and I entered a trade without without a good reason. I did that yesterday. I call it a no reason trade. So I'm going to try to hammer those out, but I really got unhappy with myself for taking this incorrectly. So I'll go through those trades in a bit. Overall price action it looked like there was kind of like two gigantic legs up, two measured moves as well, which is on this blue line. Kind of one big measured move up to here and then a second measure move up. And then within the second leg, well, actually within the first and second leg, you see smaller legs inside. So it was definitely a bullish day. And then it consolidated toward the end for the last, I would say about the last two, two hours, actually the last three hours. Cause right here is about 10 o'clock Pacific standard all the way to about one o'clock Pacific standard. So that's a good solid three hours where prices didn't really go anywhere. So there were three pieces of economic data that came out that might've impacted the news. All of them came out around 5.30 Pacific Standard, which is in this region, right about right here. It was the average hourly earnings as well as the non-farm employment change and the unemployment rate. So it all came out during this time before the market even opened for regular trading hours. I wasn't there, so it didn't really affect me. So I also drew the highs and lows of the pre-market, which is the highs of the pre-market spot right here. And the lows are right here. They didn't really come into play, so they weren't that important today. So I'm going to go into the trades right now. In the pre-market, prices shot up and it bounced off of here, came down and bounced the second time. So at this point of, at this point in the day, I'm not really sure if there is an actual trading range because you just see this. You don't really know if it's going to come back down and bounce back and forth. But I didn't see any setups there anyways. So then prices opened. I did see two legs down, but again, this is the pre-market and I don't trade the pre-market. Prices moved up. I saw a potential one leg up to right here and I saw the pullback and I'm thinking there might be a potential second leg up. Prices move up and I didn't draw this channel until a little bit later. And I was playing with a few of them throughout the day. And this is what I eventually ended up with. So prices continue moving up. They look like kind of chop and consolidate really tightly here, no good trade setups. Even if there's a second entry, it's very risky. It comes up. At this point, I do see a potential support resistance right here, more of a resistance up here, two lines up here. And it didn't quite touch here. And I did play with this previously, but I did know there's kind of some kind of resistance there. So, and the EMA is coming up from the bottom. So it is kind of holding as a support. Prices continue moving down. I saw one high, new high here, no first entry long until you get all the way down to here, which is quite a big move. Then it pulls back and I'm thinking, okay, is if it comes back and touches potentially this bottom, which I did draw at this point, which look, because even though there's a big overshoot here, I saw this as an impulsive move. So I thought, okay, maybe there's one touch, two touch. And potentially when prices were coming back down, over here, it might make it all the way back down to here and it's getting close. So this is actually your second entry long here. So actually, so it's first entry long here, first attempt to break up, comes up, comes down. I'm thinking there's potentially gonna be a second entry long coming up. So here's your second entry long that's been made now. But when I saw this candle, I thought, okay, you know, if this next candle breaks above, which it doesn't, makes a double top. Now I'm wondering if the next candle above this one's going to break up to confirm a second entry long. Here is a confirmed second entry long, but I don't take it because <clears throat> I wasn't 100% sure if it was going to make another leg down because I saw this as one clean leg indicated by this orange line. 
pulls back and potential another clean leg down. So it made one push up, pulls back a second push up. I don't know if the second push up has enough juice to make it to the top before it pulls back. So I just wasn't happy with this setup yet. Prices continue moving down. And then here, <clears throat> I saw, okay, there's one leg down, push up, second leg down, push up. Now it's another leg. So when this moved all the way down, actually I marked this as a second entry long. I think there was another, unless my candles are off, there's a first entry long, pulls back, second entry long. So actually I saw a second entry long here, looking back at my notes. So I saw first entry long, here, second entry long here. I might have screwed up my count, but I'm not really sure. However, if this was a second entry long, it did move from one side of the channel here to the other side, almost goes up. Now breaks out, and it could be a fail breakout, could move back in, but chops around. Here, that's where I draw this support line. It's not quite a channel, but I knew there's one, two, three touches, and it breaks through pushes down. I do see a new high here. First entry long. There's no second entry long until you get to about right here, but I don't like the setup. It doesn't look very clean. And I don't want to take a long where the EMA is pointing down. And up until now, it still could be within this larger trading range because it looked like it's breaking back into it. Makes a new low. Get your first entry short coming up. Oh, not yet. There's no second, there's no first entry short yet until right here. It's first entry short. I drew this channel going up. It's the first break and tested a new high. Here's your second entry short, but I don't like the second entry short just because there is enough room to the EMA, but now it's also above the EMA. So you're taking a second entry short going short above the EMA, which might flash back down. This is kind of not proving that prices are moving back into this trading range at this point. So it could actually be a bounce point. So that's what I was thinking at the time. So I decided just wait, there's no real setup. Prices chop up, <clears throat> breaks out of this shortened trend channel, makes a new high. Prices continue going down. At this point, I did draw this support, one touch, two touch, and I need a third touch of this bottom support to confirm. And I just arbitrarily put the top right here as a channel. So I have one touch, two touch. I need also need a third touch to confirm this channel. Goes up, here's my third touch. And here I do see a second entry long that's hidden. I see a new high here. Pulls down, first entry long, pulls down again, and then makes a second entry long because it broke down below and it came right back up. Now, I will say that the signal bar, well, signal bar here didn't quite close above here to really solidly put it as a second entry long, but I saw it as a hidden second entry long because it is a new high here. Here it closed and it, open, it opens here, down here, pushes up, comes back down. So it's already a first entry long right there. Then it closes up here. And on this candle, it opens, flashes down, and then it ends up closing a little bit lower and then opens right here, goes down up. So it's a little convoluted, but on a smaller time frame, it's like first entry long pulls back a second entry long. At least that's how I saw it. This is a pretty decent signal bar, but it's close to the highs and it's too far from the EMA. So I decided to skip it. And it's also closing at the top of this potential resistance because it already got hit once and now it's getting hit twice. So I decided to leave it alone. If I took the trade, it looks like I would have gotten stopped out because it would have went up and the flash down, breaks out, moves down, makes one low. So first entry long up here, pulls back. It's technically a second entry long right there, but there's no good setup. It's a pretty neutral signal bar, so I'm leaving it alone. And then I do see a visual second entry long because I saw it was one leg down, pulls up, second leg down. And it actually exceeded the measured move. And I don't have this channel drawn yet. So even though it's a visual second entry long, the measured move was made. And this is a pretty strong engulfing bar on this candle moving back up. So here, go one leg down, pulls back, a second leg down, all the way down to here, and it flashes up. However, this is just kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's below the EMA. I don't really have this line here drawn yet. So there's no key entry point to feel confident taking this trade. So I left it alone, moves up. And at this point I do connect this one to here. And then this top one, I wasn't really sure where it was at the time. So it's actually, it was actually kind of lower right here. 
And I do see a higher low on the visual because if this is a one leg down, pulls up, second leg down, pulls up. So there's a first entry long, second entry long. And then on a higher time frame, <coughs> this would be a higher low. So I call this a higher low visual, but a higher low visual isn't something I felt confident trying to take a trade off of. So I for sure just left it alone. Prices continue moving up. I do see a second entry short here that failed because from this new low, it moves all the way down. The first time you break below the previous candles right here. So the first entry short comes all the way down, pulls back, goes all the way up. The second time you actually drop below this candle is right here. So I saw this as a trap in real time. I saw it, but I wasn't super sure if it was strong enough to actually keep pushing up because it's also near the localized high. And I saw this as a potential resistance point because it already touched once, touched twice, touched potentially three times. And I'm thinking maybe it might get forced back down. And this close was not very, it wasn't convincing enough for me because it's a pretty small hammer. If it had more meat and close right at the top, making a double top or even close one tick above, then I would have felt more confident taking this trade. But double tops right here, which made me hesitate thinking it might kind of fail. So not fail, but failed to go up. So it'd actually be a first entry short, second entry short and continue down. So the next candle might move down, but it turned out to move up. So that's labeled it as a failed second entry short. So I'm okay leaving that loan. I just wanted maybe a confirmation setup. And this candle happened really quick. So this, uh, when this one formed and it flashes down and went up back up, this next candle happened and formed very quickly. This is 739 and 10 seconds. This one's 739 and 41 seconds. You can see the 740 between here and here is only like less than half a minute. So it formed very quickly. So I wasn't as experienced enough to assess this and take advantage of this trade. And prices continue moving up. Let's go ahead and uh, moves up. I saw another overlapping channel here. So it's kind of in this small little tight channel, but I don't see any good trade setups. Goes up. Now this one confirms this yellow channel, which I was wondering about because it touched once, touched twice, but at least at the top, it touched once, twice, three times. So I'm thinking it's working within this big yellow channel right here, but within that yellow channel, you also have legs going up. So I'm keeping track of those as well. I saw a new high first entry long. I saw the second entry long here. I marked it, but I didn't label it because this is too neutral and it's too far from the EMA. So it's also near the localized top which made me feel like even though it is a technically a second entry long, it wasn't a good clean setup that made me feel confident. If it had pulled back further and closer to this EMA, as well as where this green channel was going up, then I would have two key entry points. I feel more confident taking that trade, but this is just kind of floating out there. So it's kind of a dice roll, which I didn't want to take. Prices continue moving up, breaks out of this yellow line now. And again, I have this one from touch once, touch twice and goes up. And during the day, I was kind of like deleting and putting them back, deleting just to keep things clear, but I have them all, all visible now, just so it makes me review it a little bit easier. So I remember what my thinking was. So prices continue moving up. So I see this new high, first entry long, pulls back. Technically, is a second entry long right here. But if you look at where this is, this is like a lot of congestion, even though it's a possible trade. And I was tempted at one time to take this trade the signal bar is red because this is where the second entry long is made. This is a red signal bar, but what was going for it was that the EMA is holding <clears throat> and it just broke out of this ascending trend channel, this guy here, this uh, green channel going up. It's the first time it broke, so it could come back up and touch this. Also previously, other than this one breakthrough, it hasn't really touched the EMA. So the EMA is showing some strength. It shows that some buyers are coming in right when prices are getting to the EMA or just slightly below. But it's also too congested here. And even though there's just enough room to scalp out, I just want a little more confidence because I also wasn't sure if this channel was in play. So there's an overshoot, comes down, breaks out. I'm thinking there might be one leg down, pulls back, and another leg down. So all that added together made me think, okay, this is a possible trade but I'm not experienced enough and not really sure what I'm seeing. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. The price is continue moving up. Chops comes back down. I see a potential trading range here. There's a support here and there's a resistance up here. I do see this new high here. 
So even though this high is slightly higher, I just grouped this as one because it's already pretty far away. So I saw prices coming down. So first entry long pulls up, comes back down, a potential second entry long. This this uh, resist this channel doesn't exist yet, so ignore it. This is a second entry long. It pushes up. It is a good signal bar, but it was below the EMA, and there's not enough room to the EMA, or I just didn't feel there's just enough clean room to the EMA. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's just short of a clean measured move because it's one leg down to here, pulls up, second leg down. It didn't quite make the measure move, but I was thinking when I saw this, there might be enough room even to here to come back down. So even though this is technically second entry long, I just wanted if this candle, even the wick were to come down a little bit lower and close up high, I think I would have felt a little more confident. So I ended up just skipping this trade as well. Price continue moving up. Kind of chops within what I think is a trading range, which is this guy. I saw a second entry short here, a new low, first entry short. Second entry short, but when you see the second entry short potentially forming, this is not a very good signal bar for second entry short. Plus, it's on top of the EMA at this point. Even though the EMA is flattening out and potentially going into a trading range, it's not a very good signal bar. And it would be counter trend to this gigantic bullish move up. So this bullish move up pulls back second bullish move in a consolidating. So it could make another bullish move up. So to take a short way up here felt very risky. So I thought if I could find a lower high confirmation, I might feel more confident depending on what the setup looked like. Prices move up. And right here, you get your lower high confirmation. However, what made me hesitate was if you look here, this is like a triple bottom. On top of that, even though these guys broke below, they didn't have enough power to even close below this triple bottom. So even though there's a lower high confirmation to take a short, and it's right at the EMA, it just didn't feel safe enough. It was a trade definitely, but not a high probability trade because these two candles, like even this previous candle was you know, inside this guy. So it just, just wasn't sure what I was looking at. So I decided to wait. Turns out it would have worked, but I didn't know that. I don't think anybody would have known that. And only if this had even closed a little bit lower instead of so neutral, then it might've been more confident taking that trade. Prices continue moving up. It's definitely chopping within this green trading range now. So I saw this trade set up, and this is where I took my first trade. This is the trading range. Granted, the trading range could actually be a little bit higher, but we'll just keep it down here because I wanted this to be the first touch. And there's a small breakout. And there's potentially another breakout. And then I put the bottom of the trading range one here, touch here, and I saw this as another breakout, and it came back up. Kind of like this breakout moves to the other side, breaks out, and comes back in. This one had a small breakout here. So when it went back up and sat here, what I saw was potentially a second entry short fail breakout. So what I saw was potentially new low here moves up. You don't get another break lower until you get to here. So it's first entry short pulls up. And right here, I see a second entry short, but I also saw two legs up from here. One measured move up, pulls back, second measure move up. So I'm thinking there's a second entry short setting up and a potential fail breakout of this trading range. So I enter. When I saw this flash down, I said, okay, I want to enter. I would try to put it one tick right here. It flashes up and it fills me. I got a little bit of slippage by about one tick because I wanted to get in at 50 and it got me in at 25. And I thought, okay, even though this is bullish all day, it's stuck in a trading range. And if it's stuck in a trading range at the high, I'm selling at the high. So there should be enough juice to get back to at least the mid line or maybe even to the other side of the trading range. So I enter right here and then it flashes up and closes like up here and I keep my exit. So it actually went up first. So it didn't stop me out because this big high was already made and it you know jumped around all over the place and it finally closed up here. So I entered after all that noise. And then here, of course, it stops me out. It flashes up, stops me out. That's my first trade of the day. And I uh, got it as a red because I was seeing this and I was thinking, well, it might come back down here. And I thought about this and I looked at it and reviewed it throughout the day. And I think in hindsight, taking the second entry short right here above the EMA in itself was risky. And the EMA really has, you know, it's been, prices have been chopping above and below. So even though it's uh, above the EMA and it cut below, it's already kind of proven twice, once here and about twice here, that the EMA is starting to hold. So I think in hindsight, this was probably more of a uh, higher risk trade, not high probability. And I probably should have just skipped it.
when prices continue moving up, saw a new high here, first entry long. Okay, now it's a new high again. Price is moving down. Now I see a first entry long again, comes up. No setup. <clears throat> Prices continue moving. It goes and it touches this. So this is what I saw. And this is actually a setup that I was pretty happy with. And I wanted to take the trade. I also saw potentially this two touches down here. Actually, let me just go ahead and drag this a little bit lower, make it a little cleaner. And then one touch here and potentially two touches here. Now, so when I saw this, I saw a new low, first entry short made right here, second entry short. The second entry short is a very strong bullish bar. So when I saw this, I was thinking maybe it's going to bounce off the top of this from way over here. And I was thinking, okay, when this one formed, I thought this is great. I want to jump on this. But as you can see, I intended to go short, but I entered my entry as a long. And that was foolish. And when I realized it, price is already moving down. And I thought, well, my stop for my long is actually down here. I think I left two ticks, so it's right here. And what happened was when I saw this, I immediately, if when I recognized it, should have just gotten out of the trade, but I was foolish and I just kind of, you know, held and decided to see this play out, which is dumb because it's just burning money at that point. I should have just exited immediately, admitted my mistake, and potentially if it came back, re-enter as a short. But I was stubborn and I waited. So what happened is it does stop me out down here. And that was completely my fault because I clicked the wrong one. I meant to sell, but I clicked buy. Now I have done that in the past. And in the past, I was more faster to realize the mistake and quickly just flatten the trade. But today, for whatever reason, I decided, well, let's just see if this actually plays out. Because I wanted to, in, in this case, my brain changed my mental bias to align with the wrong trade, even though I knew it was the wrong trade because I wanted to go short, but I suddenly just said, well, I guess I'll go long. And that is definitely the wrong way to think. So I got punished for that. So that's my second red trade. Prices continue moving down. And there's no explanation for this trade. This is my third trade. It's what I call a no reason trade. I was just chasing. I saw this momentum moving down. EMA was kind of holding, but that's the only thing going for it. So I decided, oh, I'm just going to enter, which was foolish. I didn't even have the correct uh, trade set up. I just entered. And of course, prices go down, flash up, and stop me out. This is like no reason to take this trade, whether you know there was a setup or not. I didn't think it through. So that was my third trade of the day, which turned out to be red. At this point, I was super frustrated at myself because this trade, this trade is understandable for me that I thought it was going to go one way, but I didn't consider just due to my experience that it was too consolidated. This trade would have been a winning trade. However, I had kind of a brain fart and I actually entered long when I meant to go short. And on top of that, I didn't just quickly exit and flatten out the trade, you know, and just lost a little bit of money. I actually took a full loss, which was stupid. And then this one is a no reason trade. So this is a planned trade. This was a planned trade, incorrect execution. And this was just FOMO being an idiot. And I should have just left it alone. So it's already three trades in a row that lost. And I decided, okay, well, I could continue looking for trades and try to get that money back. Or I'm just going to mentally shut my trading down and just trade on the simulator because I know if I find another good setup, I will probably break some rules. I'll either size up too much or I'll actually try to stretch where the trade setup was going to go. I'll say, well, I want like 10 points out of this. It's like, well, there's no, there's 10 points is likely not going to happen, but most likely mentally I would have just argued it in my brain to look for some big swing. And I knew that would likely happen because It'd be my fourth trade, and I definitely have done it in the past. So I knew enough to step away and not trade anymore, except on the simulator. And so that's kind of what I did. But I didn't really take any trades on the simulator either, but I did mark up the rest of the day. So <clears throat> that's kind of what happens. It happens to everybody, though. It's a new low, first entry short, and there's a second entry short here. I saw a second entry short when it flashed down. I saw the second entry short, but definitely it's above the EMA, and it closed just below, right? And it's potentially a fail breakout of this trading range. Because <clears throat> at one time I also had this trading range. I was debating if the trading range was actually a little bit, not this guy. But this trading range on this guy might have been actually slightly lower. And this blue line here, which also gave me an uh, idea to go short, is actually a gigantic measured move from here. One leg up, pulls back. The second leg up made this measured move. So I had the extended this blue line out. 
which kind of helped reinforce why I thought this is a good trade. And I think it was, except I just executed incorrectly. And this one, I don't think it was a, it's a setup, but definitely not a worthwhile setup because even the second entry short off this first entry looks like it's just one leg. So this was definitely risky. It turns out it would have worked out, but I'm glad I didn't take that trade because it just looked not quite as obvious as I think it should have been. So prices continue moving down, chops up, still within this trading range. Breaks out of the trading range, had an overshoot here, breaks out. It's respecting the measured move here. I see a new high, first entry long, second entry long. Now, the second entry long, I thought it was actually a pretty decent trade because the EMA is holding again. It's a pretty decent signal bar. And it is the first break of this trend line. So it broke out, made one attempt to go up, and came back down. It's being held by the EMA. It's also being held by the midline right here, potentially. And it looks like you know it's a strong bar. It might try to make a second attempt up. So I thought, okay, this is actually a decent trade. But as again, I already knew this is kind of a punishment for this stupid trade here and then just not getting out here. This is a stubborn trade, number two, which I should have just scratched it. And this is a no reason trade here. So it's more of a punishment. Even though I saw it, I didn't want to risk it. Turns out it would have worked. Flashes up, comes back, and I see a new high, first entry long, second entry long. Now I also saw a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. And I'm thinking... If there's a second entry short, if it comes back down, then it'll have failed second entry long. But even if all that, I, it look, feels a little congested because these are all doji slash neutral candles and they're above the EMA. So to go short, you're going to go against this trend, which would be counter trend, which is risky. But And I, on top of that, I don't feel confident enough. I need a lower high confirmation. And lo and behold, I get this lower high confirmation right here which flashes down really strongly. Not only that, it flashes down really strongly. It closed below the EMA. So it could be a potential move back to at least this midline or the other side of this channel that I saw, which was right here. But it really hasn't only been, has only been confirmed once, twice. So to say it's going to come all the way down is a little, I didn't feel confident in it, but it turns out it would have worked. Like maybe if I see more setups like that or I'm not reading something correctly in the context, maybe I would have felt more confident taking this trade. However, I saw it. I didn't like it, so I just left it alone. Then prices continue chopping, and it just kind of goes into the rest of the day. Close at the end of the day. Certainly, I did see some other entries here. Like I saw a new high here, first entry long, second entry long, and there could be argued a trading range right here. However... <clears throat> It only had one confirmation so far. This would technically be the third confirmation, but I didn't really, uh, I wasn't allowing myself to trade anyway, so I left it alone. And it's also very close to the end of the day. This is at 1247 Pacific Standards. There's only 13 minutes left, and I don't want to get stuck in this trade and also going into the weekend, so I just decided just to keep watching it. Comes up, you can say there's a new high now, first entry long, second entry long. Now, this one isn't a very good signal bar. Had it closed a little bit higher, this might have been a decent setup. But it's also coming into the EMA, which is starting to point downwards. So again, I didn't allow myself to take the trade, but I was watching it. I just left it alone. Again, in context-wise, it's already close to the end of the day. So I definitely don't want to take any of those trades. And then it ends up closing at the end of the day. So it's three trades there, three red trades. First trade was probably I didn't read the market correctly, but I thought it was a decent trade. Second trade, I'm pretty sure it was a good trade except that I executed incorrectly. And the third trade, which was just a no reason trade, me being an idiot. So definitely a learning experience. Not a good way to end the week or end the day, but I'll probably do some more studying this weekend and try to tighten down my rules and tighten down my mental thinking. So hopefully that was helpful.